Jeff Liske is going to take us around the Great Lakes today. You will get the history of all the lakes today, where to fish, and a heads up on this new podcast, all in 20 minutes. Time for the Great Lakes. This is Dave, your Wet Fly Swing podcast host. Today I bring you episode number one of the Great Lakes podcast. This is the first episode where Jeff Liske will be hosting this new podcast to explore the Great Lakes fishing opportunities and the history of this region. I couldn't think of a better person to take you on this journey, and I hope you are as excited as I am to jump in and join Jeff as we go. Jeff is not only a premier fly fishing guide, instructor, host, and ambassador, but also an advocate for Great Lakes preservation. If you have a Great Lakes question at any point along, you can send a message uh, to me, Dave at wetflyswing.com, or check in with Jeff at greatlakesflyfishing.com and uh, and check in. He'd love to hear from you, and I would love to hear from you as well. Okay, let's let Jeff jump in the hot seat and break down episode number one of the Great Lakes podcast. I hope you enjoy. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Wet Fly Swing Great Lakes. I'm your host, Jeff Liske. I'm super excited to be able to highlight my region and bring you, the listeners, great interviews with the fishiest anglers in the region, along with the best technical and cutting-edge intel on the hows, the wares, the whens of the fishery. Super cool thing is Dave has given me free reign on all aspects of fly fishing opportunities, but also dive into a look at conventional gear and how they cross over to fly fishing to improve your fly game. Everyone has a story on how they got into fishing, you know, so I, I figure I would start with my journey and how I got bit by the fishing bug. It started a long way back in, in the early 70s when I walked into a small bait and tackle shop in Lakewood, Ohio. It was called the Tackle Box, located right across the street from my middle school. The owners, Cleveland firemen, just a couple of really nice Joes that had a passion for fishing. At the time, Ohio was in full swing, stocking Chinook and coho salmon, and the perch fishing was just a way of life. The story was pretty basic, you know, live bait in the back room, and the entire one wall was covered with hundreds and hundreds of rooster tail spinners in every size and color imaginable. That was the go-to lure for the cohos and the kings that ran up the South Shore tributaries in Ohio. It made a lifetime impression on me. That's, that's a fact. Before I knew it, I started stopping in there every day after school. And eventually, I started working there, scooping out minnows of these couple big galvanized watering troughs that livestock animals drank out of into all the small bait buckers of the perch anglers heading to Lake Erie. Sometimes there would be 10, 15 cars lined up along the street waiting to get their buckets filled so they can go take advantage of the perch fishing. That was just the way it was. While working there, I met my first two mentors, L. Petriak and Ray Halter, two of the fishiest dudes on planet Earth. They started my passion and taught me my lure-making skills, ice fishing skills, but mostly they were the ones who introduced me to the salmon trout game to me. From there, I just kept diving deeper and deeper into the fishing industry, meeting so many great people, like Don Gunling, who started the Rod Maker Shop, who was teaching everybody how to build custom rods, including myself. And every day and every year, I kept adding more and more mentors, and still adding mentors to this day. It's so many hard to count, but thanks to everyone and each one of you. My guiding journey didn't start with fly fishing. It started on Lake Erie, first meeting on a six-pack walleye charter boat. Netting clients fish, learning the waters, and eventually getting my captain's license myself and, and playing the game. My first fly fishing experience was on the Asabo River in Michigan. In the summer, for trout, floating the flies only water in the trophy water sections, I have some awesome memories watching the evening hatch come off before dark and seeing the river just come alive when the trout started feeding on the surface. That bug that has bit me 50 years ago is still leaving its sting today. Fishing comes into my life 365 days a year in one way or another. Yeah, maybe by a text, email, or just at the cash register when someone sees you wearing a fishing ball cap and reaches out 
and says while you're waiting, hey, you fishing or what do you fish for? That, my friends, is the cool thing about the tribe and the game we call fishing. If you'd like to share how you got the fishing bug, maybe from your grandfather, dad, mom, sibling, friend, or even your mate, reach out to Dave or myself so we can share your story with others, especially if it's a way cool story. Moving deeper into this episode, let's start things off with a question that I get asked all the time. Why do I live in Ohio? Right? Not real exciting. Pretty flat. Not many snow-capped mountains around. Well, being part of the Great Lakes tribe is super crazy cool. Within an eight-hour drive from my base camp here in northern Ohio, there's every freshwater species imaginable to chase. And I'll never learn all of its secrets, not, you know, not in my lifetime for sure. And it always challenges my skill no matter what type of angling I choose to do. All that being said, I'm going to try to paint you an audio picture of the Great Lakes region and what it has to offer anglers to explore. So try to close your eyes if you want, but if you're driving, of course, <laughs> don't you might crash. But let's start the story. The story starts by you imagining looking down from the heavens above, where you really get a feel of just how big these inland oceans and connected waterways are. If you were to wanting to fish all of its shorelines and the waters not including bays and harbors, you would need to cover 11,000 miles of shore in 94,000 square surface miles. Absolutely mind-blowing how large the Great Lakes in the region is. As your eyes focus on the northern portion of the Great Lakes, you're going to run into a remote and rugged country at where Lake Superior starts. It's where the deep, clear waters sank the 728-foot SS Edmund Fitzgerald on November 10th, 1985. And it spawned the famous Gordon Lightfoot song, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Those same waters host some of the largest brook trout that call the Nipigon River home and where you will find a healthy population of coasters which is the lake-run version of the brook trout that inhabit the, all the near waters in and around the islands. Moving along the North Shore, there's a bounty of streams that enter into Superior that have a self-sustaining population of trout and salmon. And often, you'll hear wolves talking to each other as you fish below many of the waterfalls that stop that migratory species from moving upstream and cohabitating with the native great populations of headwater trout. As you broaden your focus, again, we will see many islands, you know, that dot in and around the shorelines and offshore waters. A couple of them actually home to the small caribou population that has been transported out there to protect them for the wolf populations. Something you don't see, you wouldn't think of the Great Lakes. But one of these islands stand out as the crown jewel. I explored it when I was 16 years old, and I've been back there before. It's Isle Royale. This remote National Park island is an explorer's dream. From its interior lakes and streams and 450 surrounding islands, which all have vodka clear waters, it makes it a perfect place to wet a fly. You know, from shore, or, you know, or kayak, or canoe, whatever you choose to do. But as you move, start moving away from this islands and you start moving towards the south shore, it's also scattered with these really cool shipwreck and runs and endless rivers and creeks, like the famous Brule, the Two-Hearted, where you can wade or boat the kayak in the near shore waters and the connecting bay, like Quinoa, where you find cold water and warm water species to swim. It would take you multiple visits to figure out all of the secrets where the fish call home. I still haven't learned all of its secrets, and it's just a place that you can get away from all the daily problems you have. Just a whole other world of its own. As the waters of Lake Superior funnel down, it meets a giant gate system that holds its mighty waters back. It regulates, and it has shipping navigation locks, 
to allow passage of large cargo freighters down to the other Great Lakes, and even as far as the ocean. Below these gates is the St. Mary's River, one of the most unique fisheries around. The waters there run gin clear most of the year, and it's home to migratory and trout. And, you know, add in a chance to catch an Atlantic salmon on a dry fly that come in from the nearby hatchery, it just makes it a way super cool place to visit. One other really cool place is the, the tributary that enters in from the Canadian eastern side. It's the Garden River. It is as close to a small Alaska stream as it gets. It has an annual run of trout and salmon, of course, but is one is that makes the super special river is that it has a Pinook salmon, a cross between a Chinook and a pink salmon, and it's one of the few places that they crossbreed. The river runs through Native American lands, and it can only be fished by a guide, but it's, it's well worth your journey up there and experience. The lower St. Mary's River section harbors all the bays and connected waters and lakes. You're going to find every warm water species, bass, walleye, muskie, pike, that have never sometimes have seen a fly, just maybe conventional gear anglers. As the St. Mary's finally spills into Lake Huron, and where it meets a string of islands like Manitoulin, where you'll find a wide variety of fish, like the Kamaloops rainbow trout that swim in and around it like a merry-go-round. Then it enters the gateway into the vast Georgian Bay that's highly, highly one of my favorite places to fish. I even started fishing there when I was a kid. It has 3,000 islands, and it's also home to a 65-pound, 30-and-a-half-inch girth muskie. Holy mackerel, you know, that fish is just a monster. Lake Huron waters are split between Canada and Michigan, and the northern to mid-sections have a robust population of hatchery and self-sustaining migratory trout and salmon that run all the rivers, like the Saugeen, the Maitland, Thunder Bay, Asable, and the Rifle, you know, just to name a few. There's hundreds and hundreds of rivers that run into it. Many of these headwaters that rivers that drain into Huron you know, they support trout fishing also, and night mousing is a cult of its own. Many have warm water species holding an endless fallen timber in the lower sections for fish that are just waiting to attack your fly as you strip it across the many woods. The state of Michigan is called the Mitten State because of its shape. The inside web portion of the thumb area is Saginaw Bay, but just fed by Saginaw River. This area, from the intersection to its outlaying holding areas, has a secret that no one can probably unlock in their lifetime. It has backwaters to explore, miles and miles of weed blinds to explore, and as it enters into Lake Huron, there's a chain of islands there also to explore. Noted for, not noted for its cold water species, not a whole lot, but all the warm water species inhabit that. Probably one of the, my favorite places to chase carp and pike. When you cross over the lower peninsula of Michigan, you're going to run into Lake Michigan. And many of my favorite angling memories have occurred on its waters or one of its tributaries. You know, it's almost hard to do this area justice with words, but I'm sure, you know, it's going to be one of my favorite places that I'll always remember in my lifetime. Lake Michigan is shared with the state of Wisconsin and Indiana. And they all have their own shining diamonds of places that you can throw your fly. But looking to chase lake trout or carp, some of the waters in Michigan that stand tall are the famous flats of Beaver Island, Grand Traverse Bay, and Little Traverse Bay. They are some of the finest sight fishing areas to strip and crawl your flies for the carp. Directly across the lake on the Wisconsin side, you almost have this mirror image of the fishery in Door County, Green Bay region. Door County is a long peninsula along Green Bay and Lake Michigan, which separates both of them. It's a great base camp to test the near shore waters and, um, of the lake. And also, if you pop over to the other side, you can sample the Green Bay section, and you can actually try the muskie trophy fishery over there. When it comes to trophy lake trout in Lake Run Brown Trout, Great Lakes Steelhead, Chinook, and Coho Salmon. Historic rivers like Manistee, Pier Marquette, Betsy, the Platte, which are on the Michigan side. In the Milwaukee Harbor area on the Wisconsin side, 
are just a fraction of the opportunities to target migratory species. The southern portion of the lake, which has a way cool summer run Scamania program, which is over 20 years old, the small streams of Indiana and Michigan St. Joe River are where you can explore the harbors and streams and strip dreamers over the timber in the months of June, running all running all the way through the fall time. Just another way to play the game during the summertime if you don't have a boat. Not a great lake, but Lake St. Clair, sometimes referred to as the sixth great lake, it is one of the most productive warm water fisheries in the Midwest. The average depth of it is only around 11 feet. The waters most of the time are gin clear, makes it a great fly angler's dream for sight fishing. It has every warm water species that swim in it, and if you're looking to musky fish, look no farther. It has one of the largest populations of muskies over 40 inches in the U.S. It also takes a perfect place for you to huck your 12-inch flies, and don't be as surprised if you hook a large smallmouth bass while you're musky fishing. The rivers that connect to Lake Huron and St. Clair and Lake Erie are a whole other world to explore. There are these highways that connect many species that use it for spawning purposes coming out of both Lake Erie and Lake St. Clair and Lake Huron. It's a great place for you to, you know, sometimes even look at your small crafts, kayaks, paddle boards, small boats. You don't necessarily have to have a big boat there. And there are some shoreline opportunities along the river there, too. It's one of my favorite places to fish for the large white bass that run up it during the month of May and June. Working from Detroit River, you're going to bump into my home waters of Lake Erie. And it's still my favorite water to spend time on. After, you know, 50 years of fishing it, um, I still feel it holds secrets and hidden treasures that I, I'm not even aware of. You know, the Western Basin area has perfect setting for numerous adventures. From exploring the Bass Islands, or when I jump over to the border in the Canada, Pelee Island area, it just gives you the vibe that you're saltwater fishing. You can fish the back bays, you can sight fish, you can fish off the deep reefs, and every day you just never know what you're going to bump into. Sometimes a gar, sometimes a drum off the deep edge. Every day is just a new adventure. As you start working to the east, you're going to come to the south shores of Lake Erie. That's where my home port is, Cleveland, Ohio. You know, mostly remembered for the Cuyahoga River when it started on fire 50 plus years ago. And sports fans named it the mistake on the lake. But things are way different now, especially if you're an angler. It's an awesome to say that it's now one of the best places to catch walleye, catfish, drum, bass, and have the city as your backdrop. Pretty, pretty unique area. The rivers that flow from the south shores of Erie are home to Steelhead Alley, where the aggressive hatchery program of over 1.5 million supports the best migratory trout fishing to be had. East end of Erie, from Carniot, Ohio to Buffalo, New York, things sort of change. It's where the 210-foot deepest section of Lake Erie lays, and the water stay much colder and cleaner. It's not uncommon on the east end of Lake Erie, looking down 20 feet in a calm, clear day, to see fish swimming along its bottoms or suspended up in the water column. It is one of the best places to target lake trout. For the last 20 years, it's been robustly stocked with a stocking and research program, so in the fall time, as those fish migrate closer and pre-spawn, it is still going to be your best place to target lake trout on the fly in and around the Lake Erie waters. As that water of Lake Erie pushes its way east, you're going to find yourselves on the Niagara River. Words can't describe how it feels when you're fishing from a boat or shore. The size and the force of the water is something you just have to experience yourself. From swinging flies above and below the world-famous falls, you can see why you need to put it on your radar. Add in the mix of stripping streamers from a boat for lake trout or smallmouth bass. You know, I think it's just something that sometime you need to put that in the check the box or your bucket list. As the waters from Niagara, they start to pour into Lake Ontario, the last Great Lakes, 
You are entering waters of trophy trout and salmon in untouched areas that warm water species have never seen a fly. Most everyone targets the trout and salmon, so the warm water species are just sort of a forgotten species there. But believe me, you, it's, it's pretty special when you put your homework in. From early fall, all the rivers and creeks get a push of lake run brown trout, salmon, and steelhead. One of the shining stars is the Salmon River. It's on the far east end of Lake Ontario. Its clear waters make it a sweet location to swing a fly through, and even a chance at an Atlantic salmon in the summertime if you're lucky. Ending our journey where Lake Ontario meets St. Lawrence River, called the Thousand Island area. Need I say more? Endless waters to explore in and around in rivers where it meets like Ontario? That is just one place that you probably need to also check out. That, my friends, is just some of the adventures that the Great Lakes offer in while I call it home. Love to hear what you like to hear on Great Lakes topics that float your boat. If you have any questions, reach out to Dave or myself, and we'll plug that into one of the episodes. Cheers, my friends. Stay tuned for my next episode where I'll be talking about the how to make a roadmap to success to your steelhead trips and the three rules to follow when you're on a river chasing steel. Peace out, Jeff. Jeff Liske on the Great Lakes Podcast, part of the Wet Fly Swing Podcast and Swing Outdoors. I want to give a big thank you to Jeff for putting this together, and I am excited. I'm very excited to see that next episode. Jeff is going to be leading us on this journey all year long, so I hope you enjoy this, and I hope you get a better connection to your home waters and have some better fishing next time you're on the water. You can check back, send feedback, like we said, Dave at wetflyswing.com, uh, or check in with Jeff as well at his website. And I can tell you this, as a listener now, I'm excited for that next episode. I'm just like you. I can't wait for Jeff to knock this one out and get another one in the queue. So we'll be sharing this as soon as we can. These episodes are probably going to come out um, maybe once a month as we get started here. That's the hope. Might be, uh, it might take us a little while to get our feet under us, but uh, stay tuned. And if you're enjoying it, please let Jeff or myself know. We would love to hear the feedback uh, anytime, just so we know we're going to keep pumping these out. And I'm excited to see what Jeff is going to share next. Uh, One quick reminder before we get out of here, we will be doing the Steelhead School again this year. This is where Jeff will be leading the school. We're going to have a small group of people heading out to Steelhead Alley to fish for some amazing steelhead. Last year, it was an epic trip. Uh, Just blew us away. Everything came together. And uh, you can go right now to wetplayswing.com slash steelhead school right now you can sign up get your name in the in the spot there and you'll get more information when we open it up this year like i said it's going to be a small group but if you're really interested and you want to get on this trip that's the best way get your name in there and we'll check back with you that's it for now can't wait can't wait to get on the water and hear jeff's next podcast of the great lakes podcast i'm calling it the great lakes dude podcast we can call it the great lakes you can call it whatever you want to call it it's Jeff Fliske bringing his magic. Thanks again for listening today, and I will see you soon.